Now here with us in the studio, we have the current executive director of the Musco Center, Richard Bryant. Hi. Thank you for joining us in the studio today. The Musco Center has been an incredible new center on our campus, and for those who don't know, it is the second biggest performing arts center in the county. What more can you tell us about the center? Oh, uh, the Musco Center for the Arts, uh, the uh, Mary Bell and Paul Musco Center for the Arts is, is really crown jewel of Chapman University. Uh, it's an extraordinary building. The Los Angeles Times has just characterized it as one of the best in the West in terms of acoustics. And we're just now starting into our inaugural season. We opened last March the 19th and we ran during the close of the academic year. And uh, now we uh, have about 90 events coming up during this current uh, academic year. Uh, Are there any events that you would suggest that our Chapman community really focus on trying to get to? Well, all of them, obviously. But, uh, you know, it's built for the College of Performing Arts. About a third of the performances are academic performances, student performances. And it's very much our mandate to make that the first priority. And once those dates have been set, we are working with other uh, leading organizations around Southern California, like the LA Opera and the uh, Philharmonic Society of Orange County, uh, Backhouse Dance, and we have these affiliates. And so we're growing relationships with them, and they'll be integrated into the academic programs as well. And then we have visiting artists and companies who are exemplars of performing arts from throughout the nation and around the world. And finally, we have a program we call Community Entanglement. And we're doing festivals and events that are very much like the surrounding communities around Chapman. Uh, the Vietnamese community, the Korean community, the Kauaian community, the Persian community, the Mexican-American community. And so all that surfacing in this new uh, wonderful facility that has one foot on Chapman and one foot in the rest of the neighboring uh, area. And is there anything that you really hope to see for, you know, the Musco play Center playing a role in Chapman in the future? Well, yes. Uh, we want everybody to come, everyone to be there, and we're doing a number of performances that are specifically related uh, to the Chapman experience. Uh, we also have a lot of other departmental use besides the College of Performing Arts. Uh, and so if you can join us for the Visiting Artists and Companies or the COPA events or the other departments of the university producing events, it really is a spectacular world-class uh, environment uh, for teaching, learning, seeing, Seeing, hearing, you know what's best in the in the in the performing arts, and you know Chapman is a, is a creative place right here. This television studio and the film school and the College of Performing Arts and now the Musco Center and the sciences; those are all creative fields. And uh, Chapman's uh, really stepping into a leadership role and being recognized for that, not only in the West Coast but uh, throughout the United States. And one last question. You've opened up so many centers for the arts around the country, including the Sergisham Center in Costa Mesa. What makes the Musco Center different? Well, you know, we've got a stage that rivals the stage at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion in terms of the proscenium opening and also the first Sagerstrom Center that was built. Uh, but we only have 1,000 seats, and both of those rooms have 3,000 seats. So you've got the same stage capability that we have in those places, but it's very intimate. And the acoustics are just as good as it gets for natural acoustics. So it's spectacular. Well, thank you so much for being on our show with us. It was great learning so much about the new Musco Center.